Today, we are gonna talk about how for some students, the battle is just getting started. Hello everyone, Mike Tenney here with Tenney School. Tenney Tube is a series of videos that we have put together to address common issues we hear from parents about the child's education. For today's episode, we are gonna talk about how for some students, the battle is just getting started. We're not talking about warfare here, we're talking about procrastination. Procrastination can be a significant problem for some students. Some students can be irrationally optimistic about the amount of time and resources they need to complete work. These students can find themselves behind and short on resources to catch up with their homework. The combination of procrastination and unrealistic expectations can lead to lots of stress on students and perhaps even failure in school. But there are some differences in why students procrastinate. And today, we'd like to break these into two different categories. One group of students procrastinates because they are perfectionists. These students know they have homework to do and projects to complete, but they're still working on the perfect solution. They don't want to start with what they know now because they think that they may have an even better solution if they give themselves more time to think about it. The second group of students that we see procrastinate are the ones who do not see the value in the work they have been asked to complete. We'll call this the pointless procrastinators. These students will often work quickly in some subjects, but procrastinate in the subject or subjects they find more arcane. In both cases, the result can be the same. They produce stress and poor academic performance, though the perfectionist is more likely to experience stress and the pointless procrastinator is more likely to experience academic failure. So what is to be done to help the procrastinating student? As the title of this episode states, it's all about getting started. The perfectionist needs to understand that perfect is the enemy of progress. It's better to build a draft quickly and revise it over time than to wait for the final solution to appear. To the pointless procrastinator, they need to understand that the task is not going away. For both, the size of the task seems to grow until seemingly insurmountable. In truth, if they can just get themselves started, they'll realize it's not so difficult after all. To help the procrastinators get started, they need first to recognize that they are procrastinating. How does it feel when you put off something that you know you need to tend to? What are the comfort tasks that you go to when you're putting off some less desirable task? Are you focusing too much on a specific subject that you find more manageable? Do you check email, phone, or social media to put off things that you know you need to accomplish? Systematically, it helps the procrastinator to build a to-do list. First, lay out all the things that need to be accomplished, and then start checking them off. Once they have the to-do list done, we like to follow the principle that we call eat your vegetables first. Procrastinators should look for the thing on the list that they are least excited about and do that thing first. As we've mentioned, the comfort task will often get in the way of beginning the real important ones. To complete the most important tasks, the procrastinator may need to remove distractions, including the comfort tasks. You may need to put away your phone or turn off your email or your notifications. We also believe it helps to use bursts of energy to get through the things that you are least excited about. We hope that you have found this episode of TinnyTube helpful in covering student procrastination. Please leave a comment below if you have a more specific thought or questions about student procrastination.